Today we're going to be going through the best settings for the MSI MPG 274URDFW E16M. This is a 27 inch 4K 160Hz LCD monitor with a mini LED backlight. We've got a full review of the screen linked in the description below, but we'll configure the screen today for both SDR and HDR usage, as well as taking a look at gaming and other related settings. You can use these settings from a PC, from a games console or any other connected device, but we'll start by going through the the SDR settings. We'll come back to the gaming settings a bit later. The first thing we're going to want to do is choose which professional mode we want to use. Now it's on Eco as the default which is designed for energy saving. We're going to want to use one of the others but there's a choice here depending on the colour space that you want to work with. You'll see that there's this section here called Pro Mode and there's also an equivalent section in the gaming menu called Game Mode. Now these are just alternative presets designed for different gaming scenarios. They might as well all be in one menu, but they've been split into two different sections. So whichever mode you activate the most recently will be the one that's live. So if you were to activate FPS here and then go into pro mode and choose user, it would switch to the user mode and that would be the one active. So just imagine they were all in the one long menu. They've just been split into two different sections. So we're going to use the pro mode and we're gonna use either the user mode or one of the emulation mode options, which are further down. Now your choice here depends on what kind of content you're going to be viewing and your preferences around color saturation and colored vividness. The user mode operates with the screen's full native wide gamut, whereas the sRGB mode clamps to the sRGB color space. Same with Adobe RGB in that color space and the same for Display P3, which is for DCI P3 content. Now, I think most people will probably want to just use the full native gamut. That will give you a more vivid, colorful and saturated looking image. But if you find that the colors look too saturated and too vivid for SDR content, then the alternative would be to use the sRGB mode here, which clamps the color space back to that reference. So we're going to set the screen up first of all in the user mode. So this operates with the full native gamut, as we said and most of the settings for it are then within the image section of the menu. We're gonna turn the brightness up to a setting of 22. That will give you a luminance very close to 120 nits. If you want it brighter, you can use 29 for 150 nits or 41 for 200 nits. Those are just examples. You can set the screen at whatever brightness you find comfortable for your ambient lighting conditions and your preferences. We'll just leave it on 22 for now for 120 nits luminance. Contrast can stay on 70. Sharpness can stay on zero. Color temperature we're going to leave on normal as well. That's very close to the D65 white point that we're aiming for. We'll come back to the display HDR and local dimming settings later. The brightness uniformity setting is an interesting one. We found this didn't really alter the luminance uniformity of the panel hardly at all, but it is designed to improve the edges of the screen. So if you find any vignetting effect during your usage and you find that the edges start to look a bit darker, you can enable that setting here. We'll leave it turned off for now. We never really saw that during our testing anyway, but it's there if you were to experience any problems. So that's the screen set up in the user mode. As I say, that's using the full native gamut. If you want the screen to be mapped back to the sRGB color space for color aware applications, you may also want to try out our calibrated ICC profile that's linked in the description below. Now that will be used in color aware applications to clamp back to sRGB. So it's a good way to use both the user mode for the full native gamma and sRGB for relevant applications. The other option, if you just want to use sRGB content all the time and you want to avoid any oversaturation and that kind of thing, you can use the sRGB mode here in the menu instead. We'll just set that on sRGB and then you'll see that a lot of the settings are actually now unavailable. The color settings and contrast, they're not available. Brightness, you'll need to change this. Again, you can use 22 for 120 nits, 29 for 150 nits or 41 for 200 nits or whatever you like for your conditions. So that's the other option if you want to use the sRGB mode all the time. We'll take a look at the gaming settings now as well. So the main things that you might want to change would be in the gaming menu. You can use any of the extras like night vision, AI vision, that kind of thing, depending on your preferences and if you want to experiment with those in games. Response time setting, we'd recommend leaving this on the default fast mode. That is the best balance between response times and overshoot from our testing, so we'd recommend just sticking on that mode. You can enable the MPRT or the blur reduction mode here as well for certain gaming situations if you want. Check out our full review for all of our testing and information on what that mode does and when you might want to use it. Adaptive Sync you can turn on here 
If you've used the MPRT mode, then you will need to come back and turn Adaptive Sync back on if you want to use VRR. So just have that enabled here. We didn't find any problems with VRR flicker on this screen at all, so no harm in having Adaptive Sync turned on so that you can use AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync. The other thing that you might want to experiment with for SDR and for gaming and multimedia is to use the backlight local dimming mode as well for this. So it's set to off by default for SDR applications, but you can change it up to levels one, two, and three. We found that level three delivered the best performance with the deepest blacks and the greatest improvement in contrast ratio. So if you want to use that for SDR, then enable that to level three here. But we probably only recommend enabling that for games and multimedia, not for general desktop usage. If you want to, the other thing that you might want to turn on in the settings menu is the HDMI CEC option. That will just mean that when you power on an HDMI device, like a console, for instance, the screen will auto switch over to that input. That's quite handy to have turned on. You can also turn on the USB Type-C power delivery charge here if you're using the USB-C connectivity. We've now switched to HDR mode. You can see that that's activated in the on-screen menu now. As a reminder, we'd only recommend enabling Windows HDR when you're actually going to view HDR content. The reasons for that are explained in detail in our video that's linked below. But in this instance, we've enabled Windows HDR and you'll see that quite a lot of the settings are now grayed out and unavailable in HDR mode. There are a couple of things that we'll want to change though. In the professional menu, we'll leave that set on the user mode, but in the image section, you can choose between a couple of things. So you can choose to display HDR mode between 400 nits and 1000 nits. We found the 1000 mode to be optimal in terms of delivering the highest peak brightness. So we'd recommend leaving it on that. And then in the local dimming, that's set to level three by default, which is optimal in terms of returning the highest contrast ratio and the deepest blacks. So we'd leave that on as well. The other thing that you may want to have a play around with is the halo dimming setting. Now that just controls small regions and areas of the screen. If you find there's any problems with things like flashing artifacts or things like that during HDR usage, you could turn this down a bit, but it does at the same time increase the blooming and the halos around moving objects. So the default 100 setting is probably going to be preferable for most people anyway. You can experiment with that if you find there's any problems, but we just leave that on 100. So actually in HDR mode, most of the things are set at the correct default levels. 100 for halo dimming, local dimming on level three, display HDR on 1000 mode. And that's the screen setup for both SDR and HDR usage. You can find our calibrated ICC profile linked in the description below, as well as the link to the full review of the screen if you want to know a lot more about some of these modes and settings and what they all do. If you'd like to stay up to date on all of our future content, please remember to hit subscribe and give us a quick like if you found this video useful and helpful. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.